Hello and welcome back to another full step by step PC build guide and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a PC in the BeQuant Darkbase 701. If you see any parts you like you'll find everything linked in the description so let's make a start by taking a detailed look at the case. To remove our tempered glass side panel there's two captive thumb screws at the back we need to loosen and once these have been loosened we're going to be able to pull the panel backwards, tilt out and lift away. And our other side panel is removed in exactly the same way. And taking a look at the back of this panel, you'll notice we've got noise dampening material on the back. Taking a look at our case's front I.O., we've got a power button, we've got two USB Type-A ports, a single Type-C port, and a separate headphone and microphone jack. We've also got buttons to control our built-in fan and ARGB hub. To adjust the speed of any fans plugged into the PWM hub, you're going to press this button, and that will cycle the fan speed between 600, 1200, and 1900 revs per minute. If you hold the button in for three seconds, it will sync up with your motherboard. To adjust the ARGB of anything plugged into your hub, you're going to press this button to cycle through the effects. There's a combination of 32 different effects and colours. To sync up with your motherboard, again, hold the button in for 3 seconds, and to turn all the ARGB off, hold it in for 5 seconds. To remove our case's top panel, we have two non-captive thumb screws at the back we're going to need to remove. And then we're going to be able to slide our case's top mesh panel backwards, and lift it up to remove it from the case. And taking a look at the back of this panel, there's no additional dust filters, but as the top of your case is going to be exhaust, this shouldn't be a problem. Taking a look at our case's front panel, you'll notice we've got ARGB lighting bars on both sides of the panel. And our front panel can simply be pulled off from the bottom. So the ARGB bars in our front panel are able to connect wirelessly. We've got these gold pins on the bottom of the panel, and they connect to the gold contacts on the front of the case. We've got a magnetically attached dust filter in the front of the case, and it can simply be pulled away. And we've also got a full length dust filter on the bottom of the case which can be pulled out from the front for cleaning. You can see we've got a Silent Wings 4 PWM fan pre-installed at the front of the case and it is possible to mount up to 3 120 or 340 millimeter fans at the front or up to a 360 or 280 millimeter radiator. We've got a removable fan stroke radiator bracket at the front of the case. It's held on with two thumb screws at the top. And then when the thumb screws loosened you can simply tilt the bracket out and then lift it up and out to remove it from the case. You can see this fan is connected up to our fan hub at the back and that's the reason I can't fully remove the bracket. You can see we've got another two Silent Wings 140mm PWM fans pre-installed in the case. The fan support at the top of the case is exactly the same at the front, up to three 140mm fans or up to 360 or 280mm radiator. While at the rear of the case, if you prefer, you can mount a 120mm fan or radiator. We've got a removable fan stroke radiator bracket at the top of the case that's held on with a screw at each side. And then with the screw removed, you can simply slide the bracket out and you'll notice this time I have freed the fan cable up from the back. We've got another fan mounting slot down at the bottom of the case where you're able to mount either a 120 or 140 millimeter fan. You're simply going to slide the fan into place and screw it in from the bottom. And you can see with this panel in place, that bottom fan's not going to be very effective. So we can pull the panel off. And in the case accessory box, we get a vented panel that we can clip into place. And you see we've got these angled vents which are going to be directing airflow from that bottom fan up and into your graphics card. In terms of motherboard support, the case supports motherboards up to EATX, and you're going to go with a CPR cooler. The maximum height is 185 millimeters. In terms of graphics card support, we've got seven horizontal and three vertical PCI expansion slot brackets. And in terms of graphics card support, the maximum length supported is up to 430 millimeters. So in terms of these vertical slots, my only concern is that they are actually pretty close to the tempered glass panel. So this would be fine for a water cool card, but I would have some concerns about putting an air cool card right up against the tempered glass panel. You'll notice we've got these plastic covers over to the right hand side of the motherboard, and these simply pull off and behind them we've got two drive mounting slots for two and a half inch drives. All you need to do is push four of the little rubber pads that come in the case accessory bag into the four inner slots. We get two sets of standoffs in the case accessory bag. The ones with the smaller threads are for two and a half inch drives and the ones with the bigger threads are for three and a half inch drives. So we can screw four of the ones with smaller threads into the back of a two and a half inch drive. Then all we need to do is push the two and a half inch drive into the rubber pads and that's going to hold it in place. And you see the middle cover is going to cover our drives IO and if you want to get access to it, it simply pulls off. If you'd rather not mount your drives in the main body of the case, it is also possible to mount them at the rear of the case. So on the side of the case, you're going to be able to mount either two 2.5-inch uh, drives or two 3.5-inch drives. If you do want to mount a 3.5-inch drive, you're going to put the little rubber pads into the outer holes, and you'll see they are labelled with HDD or SSD to indicate which of them you should install them in. We've got one more 2.5-inch drive mounting slot behind our motherboard tray. Again, it's just a simple matter of setting the little rubber pads into the holes, and then you can set your 2.5-inch drive into place. It is also impossible to install a drive tray down at the bottom of the case. In the case accessory box, you get this little bracket here. You can see we've got two screw holes here, 
and two screw holes at the bottom. So this is just going to simply slot into place. And then you're going to secure it with two screws at the top and two screws at the bottom. Now the drive trays that you're going to need don't come with a case. You are going to have to pick them up as an optional extra. And with the white case, obviously you can get them in white. This is just one I've taken out of my 901. So in the drive trays, you're going to be able to mount either a two and a half inch or three and a half inch drive. They're going to simply slot through the hole in the bracket and you're going to be able to tighten up the thumb screw at the top to hold it in place. And you can see if you do want to go with this optional extra, you still are going to be able to mount a fan beneath it. So cable management at the back of this case looks like it should be really good. We've got plenty of brackets here and in the case accessory box, we get loads of Velcro cable straps. So this is our PWM fan and the RGB hub and you can see that we've got eight PWM fan connectors and also two 3-pin 5-volt ARGB connectors. And as we mentioned, there is the option of motherboard control. All we're going to do is plug the PWM cable and ARGB cable into headers on our motherboard. And it's important not to forget to plug in the SATA power cable or the hub won't work. In terms of our other case cables, we've got a HD audio cable. Our front panel connectors are all organized into a single cable. We've got our USB 3.0 cable and also our front panel Type-C cable. And great to see that all the cables are color matched to the color of the case. So our power supply is going to go down at the bottom and the case is compatible with full-sized ATX power supplies up to a maximum length of 250 millimeters. And it's great to see we've got a removable power supply bracket at the back of the case. It's held on with four thumb screws. So we're simply going to be able to fix this to the back of our power supply, allowing us to install our power supply directly in from the back. The last optional step I want to show you is how to invert the case. And there's two reasons for doing this. The first is if you want a really unique build with your motherboard upside down and your graphics card upside down, or the second reason, if you want to have the PC sitting over on the left-hand side of the desk, this means you're going to be able to look in from this side and have the tempered glass panel on this side and see your build. So first thing to do is remove this panel at the bottom and we can simply push down here. The panel is then going to tilt out and we're going to be able to lift it up. And there's two screws at the front of the case to remove. We're going to have to free up all our fan and case cables. I'm just going to remove all the cable ties. And then I'm just going to remove all the cables from our fan and ARGB hub. And then we just get the ARGB cable coming to our front panel to pull out. And I'm just going to tuck the cable coming from our front fan into the main body of the case. And we'll just set these cables up and out of the way for now. Okay, so there's five screws at the back of the case to remove. We've got two on each side of the case. And we've also got one screw down here to remove. So this panel should now be free and we're going to be able to slide it out from the case. We can then turn our case round and rather than inserting the panel the same way we've just removed it, we're going to turn it round 180 degrees. And we've got little rails on this side we're just going to need to slide it into. And we can tighten up the screws again. And we'll replace our two front screws and there is little arrows marking out the holes. Then we can pass all our case cables through to the back. At the back of the case you just need to re-manage all your cables. I'm not going to do this fully because I'm not planning on doing an inverted build. But your cables are simply going to route around all these cable covers. It would make sense to use the Velcro cable straps to help manage them. And you see the cable coming from our front fan is coming out the wrong side. So you just need to remove it from the bracket with the four screws, turn it round, bring the cable out this side and screw it back into place. And then we can slot the bottom panel back into place. So I've just popped some of the panels on very quickly to give you an idea what this is going to look like. So as I've said, the big advantage is if you're going to have this on the left hand side of the desk, you're now going to be able to look in and see your build. Um, your graphics card is going to be installed here horizontally but upside down, and your motherboard is going to be installed here upside down as well. So I've got our case back in the standard orientation. The only additional step I'm going to do at this stage is move our top case fan to the front of the case because I'm going to be installing a 360mm I.O. at the top. We're now ready to start working on our motherboard and we're going to be installing our CPU, the backlit for our CPU cooler, our M.2 SSD and our RAM before putting the motherboard into the case. So we can open our socket cover by pushing this lever down and out to bring it all the way to the top of the motherboard and then we can open the cover up. We can then lower our CPU down into the socket, holding it by the edges. There's notches in the top but at the bottom of the socket which are going to line up with our CPU. We can wiggle it from side to side just to check it's quickly orientated in the socket. And once we're happy that it is, we can go ahead and close our socket cover down. If we apply a little bit of pressure here, the black of the plastic is going to pop off and we'll put it in our motherboard box for safekeeping. And then we can close the lever again to secure our CPU in the socket. We're now ready to install our M.2 SSD. The top slot is a Gen 5 slot and it shares PCIe lanes with our graphics card. And as we've only got a Gen 4 drive, I don't want to downgrade the PCIe lanes for our graphics card, so I'm going to be installing it in the bottom left-hand slot. So we can remove our heatsink. We can then line our drive up with a slot, flatten it down, and we'll close this little lever to secure it in place. 
If you're using the motherboard from new, there'll be some plastic protection like we've got here over the heat pad that you're going to need to remove, and then we can replace our heat sink. We're going to be installing our RAM in the second and fourth slot along from the CPU, so we'll open the clips on these slots. Then we can take our RAM, lining it up with a slot, and once we're happy everything's lined up, it's just some firm pressure, and it's going to clip into place. We're now ready to install the backplate for our CPU cutter, so we're going to want to make sure we pull each of these to the outer setting because we've got an LGA1700 motherboard. For LGA1200, you want to have these in towards the middle. And then all we need to do is line them up with the holes in the back of the motherboard. And then we've got four of these standoffs to screw onto each corner. We can then insert the motherboard into the case, lining them up with the standoffs at the back. And as we get the middle standoff through the motherboard, it's going to help hold it in place. And it is a solid standoff, there's no screw that we're going to need to put into it. So we're going to be able to secure the motherboard into place with eight of the motherboard screws from the case accessory bag. Next we've got our case cables to plug in, our HD audio cable is going to go into this header on the bottom left of the motherboard. So we can bring it through the cutout, and we're going to plug it in with the HD audio text facing up the way. We've got two ARGB headers at the bottom of the motherboard, so I'm going to bring the ARGB cable coming from our ARGB hub through, and get it plugged in. Next to it we've got a system fan header, so I'll bring the PWM cable coming from our fan hub through, and get it plugged in. Our front panel connectors are going to go into this header down the bottom right hand side of the motherboard, and it's the pins over to the left hand side that we're going to plug it into, with the front panel text facing up the way. Then we'll just pull the access cable through to the back. Our USB 3.0 cable is going to go into this header here, so we can bring the cable through the cutout, line it up with the header, and push it into place. And then our front panel type C cable is going to go into the header above, so we'll bring it through the cutout, line it up, and push it into place. And again, we'll just push all the excess cable through to the back. And I've plugged the cables into your power supply that we're going to need, so I've plugged in two 8-pin EPS cables for additional power to your CPU, a 12-volt high power cable to power our graphics card, our 24-pin motherboard cable, and I've also plugged a SANA power cable to power our fan and RGB hub. We can then secure our power supply bracket to the back of our power supply using the power supply screws. Our power supply has a zero fan mode, so whenever the power supply is under low load, the fan stops spinning, helping to reduce noise in the build, so we're going to want to turn this to on. Now importantly, we are going to want to install our power supply with its intake fan facing down the way, and we'll secure it into place at the back by tightening up the thumb screws. Our two 8-pin EPS cables are going to go into these headers at the top left of the motherboard, so we can bring the cables through the cutout at the top, and get them plugged in. And then we'll just pull the excess cable through to the back. Our 24-pin cable is going to go into this header here, so we'll bring our cable through the cutout, line it up with the header, and push it into place. And then just pull the excess cable through to the back. And then we just need to plug the SATA cable coming from our power supply into the SATA cable coming from our ARGB and fan hub. Next we can set our fans onto the radiator and secure them into place using the long radiator screws. Then I'm going to take the PWM cable coming from our fans and plug them into the triple splitter cable. And that's just going to leave us a single 4-pin PWM cable to plug into our CPU fan header. We also get an ARGB splitter cable with our I.O. So I'm just going to plug each of our ARGB cables into the splitter cable. And again, we just need to plug this ARGB cable into an ARGB header on our motherboard. We can then set our top radiator bracket into place, and we'll secure it into place using these short radiator screws. So I'm just going to pass all our fan cables through to the back, and then we can slot our top radiator bracket into place. And as we pull it through, I'm just going to keep pulling all the cables through to the back. So one thing I'm noticing with our AI installed at the top, it is actually blocking access to our fan and ARGB headers at the top of the motherboard. So I'm not going to rush to put the screws in at the top, because what it means, I can leave the AI at the top, just pull it forward slightly, and then I'm going to have access to the headers at the top of the motherboard. So our CPU fan header is this header in the middle, so I'm going to bring the PWM cable coming from our fans back through, and get it plugged in. We've got an ARGB header at the top of the motherboard, so again I'm going to bring the cable up and get it plugged in. And we'll just push the bracket in briefly until we install our pump. If you get the I.O. from you, there'll be thermal paste pre-applied. I've used it before, so I'm going to add some thermal paste to the centre of the CPU. The other thing I like to do is wrap the tubes coming from the I.O. Up, up around the bracket, where they're going to be kept out of the way and organised towards the top of the motherboard. And then we can insert the pump over the bracket we've applied to the motherboard. There's two different thumb screws that come with the I.O., so we're going to want to use the one with the line in the middle. We then need to get a thumb screw onto each corner, and then we just need to tighten each corner up and turn. 
So we can now pull the radiator back out again to make some space at the top. And we're just going to route our cables up towards the top of the case. Our AIO pump header is just this one here to the right of our CPU fan header. So we'll get our cable plugged into it. And we've got some USB 2.0 headers down at the bottom of the motherboard. So we can bring our USB cable through and get it plugged into one of those. Then we can push our radiator back into place and secure it with the two screws we removed earlier on. And at this stage we can replace our case's top panel. We're now ready to install our graphics cards. So we're going to be removing the second and third slot cover from the top. Next we can line our graphics card up with the slot. And then once we're happy everything's lined up correctly, there's some firm pressure to the graphics card and it's going to clip into place. And we can secure it using the two thumb screws we've just removed. We can then bring our 12 volt high power cable through the cutout at the bottom, line it up with our graphics card and push into place. Okay, last thing to do is some cable management and get the panels back on again. So that's the build complete and looking absolutely amazing. I think the black and white theme works really well in this case. If you don't know how to set the PC up, including installing Windows, I've made a full guide to doing that. And I'll put a link to a video that covers all of that in the description. In terms of the temperatures, our i9-4900K idled at 33 degrees and reached a maximum of 98 degrees during a 10 minute out of 64 stability test. During that test, there was up to 11% thermal throttling. The Strix RTX 4080 idled at 29 degrees and reached a maximum of 64 degrees during the stability test. In terms of noise, we had average noise levels of 34 decibels at idle and 52 decibels under load. So I'm not planning on doing a separate case review, so I will spend a couple of minutes sharing my thoughts on the case. Now this isn't a cheap case, it's gonna set you back around about 240 pounds in the UK. It does come in both black and white. Um, but for that money, you are getting a case with absolutely brilliant build quality, as you'd expect coming from BeQuiet. So this is a really heavy, well-built case. It comes with three really good fans installed. You've got those really nice lighting bars on the front of the case with a good PWM and ARGB controller with buttons at the front of the case to adjust the speed of the fans and the effects on the ARGB controller. In terms of things I didn't like about the case, there's not an awful lot to say here, but um, three things. The first is there's no support for back connector motherboards. And I think this is gonna become more and more common that people are using these types of motherboards going forward. I wasn't a big fan of having the vertical PCI expansion slots at the front of the case right up against the tempered glass panel. And I think the bracket that rotates round would be my preference rather than having separate brackets at the front. And the third thing I thought this case probably needed was a GPU support bracket, given that you can fit really large modern graphics cards in it. But weighing up the pros and cons, this is a really solid case, and I think you would be really happy with it going forward. If you have enjoyed this full step-by-step -step PC build guide, please remember to give it a thumbs up, and if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.